The Castlevania series is one of the most loved franchises in retro gaming. But for all the love it gets, I don't think that people are aware of just how many games it has. But there's actually a world of Castlevania games beyond Symphony of the Night and Castlevania 4 that even hardcore fans of the series aren't even aware they exist. So today, we're gonna take a look at the obscure, the weird and the bizarre Castlevania games that time forgot. We are of course all familiar with Castlevania for the NES. This game is pretty popular and is fairly easy to come by as it's been released both physically and digitally multiple times. However, Castlevania has been ported to multiple systems, including the MSX. This is a sort of reimagining of the original Castlevania which was released exclusively in Japan. It uses the same soundtrack but the graphics have been redrawn and the gameplay was massively changed. Now, instead of being a linear action platformer, you have multiple rooms to explore where you'll find keys, hearts and upgrades. Keys can be used to open chests which will contain items that improve your abilities like the shield. You'll also find sub-weapons like the axe, though now they've been changed. The axe instead of launching on an arc, it now functions more like the cross or boomerang where it will always return to you. The issue is that if you don't pick up the axe when it comes back to you, you will automatically lose it, which makes the sub-weapons kinda pointless if you ask me. Sub-weapons don't consume hearts either, instead hearts are now currency, which you can use to trade for items at merchants. I feel this game has a lot of potential and it kind of feels like the prototype to Simon's Quest, but it suffers from two major issues. The first is that enemies are always respawning at the edges of the screen, and that means that you can easily suffer cheap hits as you move closer towards the screen. Additionally, many items and keys that you need to progress are hidden, forcing you to backtrack all around the level and just whipping at empty walls until you find whatever item you missed, which can become very annoying very quickly. I feel that this is a good game, but these last two issues really should have been addressed. Castlevania was also brought over to MS-DOS computers. Unlike the MSX Castlevania port, however, this was handled by an outside studio and not Konami itself. In this case, Unlimited Software Inc., the same studio behind the MS-DOS port of Metal Gear, which I already reviewed a few months ago. But yeah, considering how much I disliked the MS-DOS port of Metal Gear, I was dreading to play this. But you know what? It's actually not that bad. Yes, the scrolling is a little choppy, but that was common with MS-DOS games. I mean, the reason why Commander Keen became so popular was because it achieved smooth scrolling graphics on MS-DOS systems, something thought to be impossible at the time. The game controls fairly well, but there seems to be a delay that is not present in the NES version. The graphics also seem like they were ripped straight out of the NES game, which were then resized and recolored. Because of that, I guess you could say that this version looks better on a technical level, but the NES sprites were clearly not meant to be resized like this. The music allows for FM audio which makes the soundtrack very Sega Genesis, which I'm all for. In fact, not gonna lie, I kinda dig some of these tunes. and it gives us a good idea of what the original Castlevania might have sounded like on the Sega Genesis if it were ported by a western developer. Now, there's actually two versions of this game floating around the internet, one of which lets you choose between FM audio or PC speaker, and the other which only lets you use the PC speaker. Personally, I don't recommend using the latter, or you'll get this. But yeah, you know what? This one's not bad. Now, 
Next up, we have Castlevania on the Commodore 64. And once again, my expectations for this one were pretty low. But lo and behold, this version is actually kind of amazing. The scrolling is smooth and Simon controls very closely to the NES version. The music is… fine. It replicates the original soundtrack ok, but I feel the Commodore 64 sound chip could do better. Unfortunately though, there are no sound effects, so that's a bummer. Honestly, my biggest issue with this version is the fact that if you want to use your whip, you need to lightly tap the action button, but if you want to fire a sub-weapon, you need to hold the action button. In a game which requires split-second decisions like Castlevania, this is a pretty big issue. But it's also something that I can't really fault the developers for, as most joysticks at the time only had a single button. But overall, yeah, this is the best version so far. I'd place it just below the NES original and just above the MS export. Next up, we have Castlevania on the Amiga and oh boy. You know, the Amiga is by far the most powerful system that we've taken a look at so far. And yet, this is also by far the worst port of Castlevania. From a technical standpoint, the graphics got a nice overhaul, as the sprites and backgrounds have all been redrawn and now sport more colors. But man, I hate this art style. It's like they took Castlevania's horror roots and just went with the most child-friendly and ugly version you could imagine. I mean, just look at what they did to the Medusa heads. What even is that? Also, the living armors now moan when you hit them. So I guess that now, they're just regular knights wearing armor. And you gotta laugh at what they did to poor Dracula here. Oh, and also, when you die, you hear a horse neigh for some reason. Additionally, it feels like every other enemy you dispatch will drop an item. Usually a money bag which does nothing other than give you points. So I guess there's a lesson to learn here. Give Castlevania to a European developer from the 90s and they will turn the game into a Euro platformer. Yeah, I'm just gonna put this one right on the bottom of the pile. The worst part about Castlevania for the Amiga is that the system could do far more than this. I mean, just look at Akumaju Dracula AGA. This is a fan-made port of the X68000 version of Castlevania for the Amiga. And not only does it look and run far better than the official Amiga game, but it also sounds better. This is the game that Amiga fans deserved, but never got until recently. Unfortunately though, this is still just a demo, and so far only the first level is complete. Hopefully, we'll see a full release soon. Now, you might think that we're done with the officially sanctioned Castlevania 1 ports, but oh, you'd be mistaken. Because in 2004, we got Castlevania for the mobile phones. And wow, this is pretty bad. The graphics have once again been redrawn, though they are at least faithful to the original. But the controls are super laggy, and the background is just a single image that never scrolls. Additionally, the level design was changed a bit, like how now, for example, you cannot break any walls, so you can forget about looking for hidden food items over there. I actually owned this game on my old Nokia phone back in the day, and the worst part about this port is that it only has two levels. If you wanted to play the rest of the game, you simply had to buy part two. Man, what a rip. So yeah, this version is pretty bad, but I think I would still play it over the Amiga version. Now, believe it or not, Konami wasn't done yet, because they would release yet another Java version of Castlevania, though this one is far better. Once again, the graphics have been redesigned, and to the game's credit, this one looks pretty good. The backgrounds even look 16-bit, with an art style that is attempting to mimic Super Castlevania 4. Once again, you cannot destroy walls, but now the roast leg simply appears out of nowhere. You do get quite a bit of a screen crunch, but the level design seems to have been ever so slightly altered to fit with your limited field of view, so that's fine. Unfortunately, 
Once again, this only has the first two levels. Except that this time, for the life of me, I could not find part 2. So if I had to guess, I would just say that Konami never made one. A shame too, because this is actually a pretty good port. I like this one. Now, supposedly, there is yet another Java version of Castlevania, whose graphics look even better, but all I could find was two measly screenshots online. And let's be honest here, phone game preservation isn't exactly at its peak, so there's a good chance that this version might be lost somewhere hidden in the deepest, darkest corners of the internet. Castlevania will receive yet another port, this time in the form of Versus Castlevania, which is basically Castlevania for the NES running on an arcade system. This is basically just Castlevania 1, but with a few key differences. The first is that colors are ever so slightly different. It's not a major change, but it's kind of noticeable when you put the two side by side. What is more noticeable though is the difficulty increase. For one thing, enemies now do double damage. I mean, just look at this! A single flea man took out a third of my health with just one hit! Man, that's cheap! Not only that, but the timer is way more strict now. It gives you just enough to barely complete a level if you don't make any mistakes. I finished every level with just seconds to spare. And in fact, I don't think I've ever heard Castlevania's ticking time beeper until now. And wow, it's really annoying. Overall, this is just regular NES Castlevania, but harder and with slightly different colors. So I guess it's the best of the bunch. Now, I'm sure we're all aware of the Game Boy Castlevania games, as they're fairly popular and are included in the Castlevania Anniversary Collection for the PS4 and Switch. But did you know that Castlevania Adventure got a remake on the Wii? This is Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth, a digital-only release for the Nintendo Wii. Even though this is based off of the original Game Boy game, the truth is they have very little in common. You've got the same songs, and the backgrounds are inspired by the Game Boy game, but the level design, your abilities and the bosses are completely different. But still, this is a great game, that you can no longer buy, and it's honestly criminal that this was not included in the Anniversary Collection. But Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth was not the first time that this game got the remake slash remaster treatment. That actually happened on the Game Boy Color, with the Konami GB Collection Volume 1. This is a compilation of four classic Konami games for the original Game Boy, except that now they were given color and were re-released for the Game Boy Color. Castlevania The Adventure is a fairly maligned game for the original Game Boy, and that's because the game really chugged along rather slowly. This Game Boy Color version somewhat mitigates the issue and runs a little faster, but it's still not great. And the game would often start to chug even more when there's more than one or two things happening on screen at once. Worse still, this game does not have sub-weapons, meaning that you're missing out on one of the series' main gameplay features. Additionally, the level design here leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, right at level 1, you're required to make a series of pixel-perfect jumps which are just infuriating. I remember hating this game as a kid because of this specific segment, and playing it again now, almost 30 years later, man, I still hate this section. Overall, this game's fine. I feel the Game Boy Color version is the definitive way of playing this, so it's a shame that Konami did not include this in the Anniversary Collection, especially considering this Game Boy Color version only launched in Japan and Europe. Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge also got the same treatment as part of the Konami GB Collection Volume 4. Once again, the game was given color. And once again, it came as part of a compilation. And also once again, it only ever launched in Japan and Europe, with no re-release ever since. 
Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge is by itself a far better game than Castlevania The Adventure. But this Game Boy Color version makes an already great game even better. The speed is pretty much the same between the Game Boy and Game Boy Color versions, but I feel the colors here were chosen more carefully than they were in the first game. I always felt that the colors in the first game were a little weird and basic depending on the stage. But here, it just seems to make more sense, with the waters and mirrors being blue and different types of ground having different colors, and in many ways the colors help to highlight the graphical detail. I had gone down this section so many times on the Game Boy and I never even noticed that the walls had mirrors here. But with the new color scheme, I tend to notice all these little details that I've never noticed before. Not only that, but Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge reintroduces sub-weapons. Not all sub-weapons are here though, as you're missing the dagger and the clock. But it's still a marked improvement. The game is also faster and the music is absolutely fantastic. This is one of the most underrated classic Castlevania games and the Game Boy Color version is the definitive way of playing it. Arguably the second best Castlevania game on the Game Boy Color is uh, something whose name I can't pronounce but looks something like this. Which, if Google is to be believed, it translates to Castlevania The Empire of Ghosts. This is a bootleg Castlevania game created in Taiwan for the Game Boy Color and it's honestly way better than it has any right to be. For one thing, this is a full-blown Metroidvania for the Game Boy Color and it's pretty clear the developers took inspiration from the official Game Boy Advance Castlevania games, namely Harmony of Dissonance. And this game honestly has it all. You have an experienced leveling up system that makes you stronger as you defeat enemies. Foes will also drop weapons and armor that you can equip to increase your attack and defense. You'll often come across new abilities like the double jump that let you access new areas and you'll also find merchants that heal you and where you can spend money to buy items for your inventory. And you even have a map that you can bring up at any time. Like, this is some seriously impressive stuff. The enemy design is a bit weird though, with some foes being redesigns of Final Fantasy monsters or taken from other bootleg games. And the hit detection is a bit wonky, but it mostly works in your favor. But overall, yeah, this is a pretty great game and I recommend you track it down. Castlevania The Arcade is an arcade game released in 2009. This is a sort of light gun and motion controller hybrid in which you have to swing a whip using a controller reminiscent of the PlayStation Move or the Wiimote. The game is completely on rails and lets you pick between two different characters. Sadly, as far as I know, there's no way to actually emulate this game and the arcade machine is so hard to find that there's an actual wiki page listing the currently known locations, of which there are not a lot of them. So the best I can do is share knowledge that this game exists and credit the channels where I got the footage from. Please follow them. And seeing as how we're talking about arcade games, how about Haunted Castle, which was Castlevania's first original arcade game. And uh, yeah, this isn't well regarded by fans and with good reason. Truth be told, even though this is an official Castlevania game by Konami, it's often assumed that this was meant to be an original game that Konami decided to slap the Castlevania title on it in Japan just for name recognition. This is an interesting entry into the series, but not a particularly good one. This is Castlevania II Simon's Quest Tiger Electronics LCD. Did I just spend the better part of a day scouring the deepest, darkest corners of the internet all just so I could emulate the Tiger Electronics version of Simon's Quest on main? Yes, yes I did. And 
well, what can I say? It's a tag electronics game. Basically, you move from left to right and jump over gaps. And when enemies appear, you need to whip them at the right position. So for example, if you're facing forward, you can whip up or down. If enemies are behind you, you need to turn back and again whip up or down. You can also jump where you can whip in front of you and backwards. Finally, some enemies will appear at a distance and you have to throw your dagger at them. And that's it! You just keep doing this over and over again and the game keeps getting more difficult the more you progress. Honestly, once the novelty factor wore off, I was bored of this within minutes. But this is not where Tiger's foreway into Castlevania games ends. Oh no! Because Tiger would end up porting Castlevania Symphony of the Night to the Gamecom. And uh, wow! Now granted, this is a beta that was never finished. And the emulation might not be perfect. But man, this is bad. Not to mention that the sound effects are super generic. Weirdly enough though, I am actually super impressed by this game, because they actually did it. You've got Symphony of the Night on the Gamecom, and it's recognizable as such. You've got the map, the menus, the leveling up system, the inventory, relics, the areas from the PS1 game, you can even use Alucard's magic. The hit detection is pretty wonky, but honestly, this might just be the most playable Gamecom title out there. It's kinda weird though how they gave Death an idle animation, when not even Alucard has one. Still, outside of morbid curiosity, I wouldn't recommend playing this game. But believe it or not, Tiger would actually make yet another port of Symphony of the Night. Yes, just when you thought that you could not demake Symphony of the Night any more than it already has been, Tiger finds a way. Sadly, unlike Simon's Quest, I could not for the life of me find the ROM of this game. I'm not even sure if this game has been dumped, so I'm gonna have to use footage from another channel. But hey, give them a follow as a reward for posting an actual playthrough of the entire game on YouTube. They are braver souls than I am. Ironically, as I'm watching the gameplay, it kinda feels like all they did was remake Simon's Quest because, once again, it seems that all you do is walk forward, jump over pits and attack in different angles and positions as the enemies come at you. Try as I might, I could not find a ROM or even any discussion on how to emulate this game. Every time I googled Tiger Electronics Symphony of the Night, my search results would all be about the Gamecom release. So this means that the fact that the Gamecom prototype was discovered has ironically only made this version even more obscure. If you know where to find this game and how to emulate it, please let me know in the comments. I would love to give it a shot someday. This is Konami YY World. And this is not a Castlevania game in the traditional sense. This Famicom exclusive release is a celebration of all things 8-bit Konami. You play as Konami Man and Konami Lady, and you need to rescue characters from the various Konami-related properties like Contra, Ganbare Goemon and Castlevania. So you go into their worlds, find the key, rescue the character and they become playable. And in this case, you'll be rescuing Simon Belmont's non-canonical descendant Simon III. Now, with this being a crossover game, Simon doesn't quite control like the other NES counterparts. For one thing, you have full control of your jump and Simon only gets one sub-weapon, the cross, which you must collect after rescuing him. The cool thing here is that as you rescue characters, you can change between them, and each one has their own health bar. As a result, this game has a bit of an inverted difficulty curve, in which it's more difficult at the beginning, but starts to progressively getting easier as you unlock more characters and therefore gain more health bars. Now, if you lose a character, 
you'll have to grind for ammo to resurrect them back at your home base. And you'll need to explore each level for secrets to get all the keys and each character's sub-weapon. With that said though, this game does suffer from some pretty major design issues. Like how I'm pretty sure there's no way to avoid getting hit by some enemies if you don't have the right character with you. And you'll have to backtrack often because some items can only be collected by the correct character. But overall, this is a really unique game. I kinda dig it to be honest. YY World would be followed up by YY World 2 SOS Parsley Castle. This time, you don't need to rest your characters and instead, you choose your lineup right from the start. However, you're stuck playing the new original character, Rickle, for most of the time. And you'll be picking up upgrades that let you temporarily control one of the more famous Konami characters. From a technical standpoint, this is a much better game, featuring better graphics, two-player co-op and arguably better music. But I don't know, I kinda like the exploration gameplay of the original game a little better. Sure, it has some design issues, but I feel that those could have been improved upon. Instead, we now get a more generic action platformer and Simon feels a lot less like Simon than he did in the previous game. So even though YY World 2 is arguably the better game, it also feels a bit too similar to most other games that you would find on the NES. You do get to see Castlevania themed levels towards the end of the game. Overall, a pretty good game, but I like the first one better. This is Akumajo Dracula for the Sharp X68000. The game is a sort of remake or reimagining of the first Castlevania title, except it now features far better graphics and music. The gameplay is faster, but has remained largely the same. But the levels on the other hand, haven't. At first the game lulls you into a false sense of security, with the first level being an almost one-to-one -one remake of the NES title, though they do warn you that not everything is that seems. Like when you get to this part and you whip the wall hoping to get some of that sweet sweet pork chop health and instead you're attacked by an infinite army of flea men. And once you finish level 1, all bets are off. For starters, the level order has reshuffled with stages 2 and 3 trading places. But now, the bosses are different, the level design is radically different and so are the enemies. I know some people aren't big on this remake. But I like it, I think that most were expecting the gameplay to be more like Super Castlevania 4. But for me, I'm glad they went with this route instead. Of course, I am playing this as part of the Castlevania Chronicles compilation for the original PlayStation. This is a compilation disc which features the Sharp X68000 game and the remaster of that same game. You can literally choose between the remake or a remaster of the remake. To be fair, the graphical jump between the two is nowhere near as big as it was with the NES version, and the controls are largely the same, and the music feels like you're at a nightclub in Europe. Between the two versions, I think that this is a better one, but honestly, both are really good and both are worth tracking down. Castlevania Spectral Interlude is an original fan-made game created in 2015 for the ZX Spectrum and it is glorious. What originally began as a port of Simon's Quest to the humble 8-bit computer gained a life of its own and became an original project and no joke, this is one of the best 8-bit Castlevania games ever made, official or not. For one thing, I love what they did with the system's limited color palette. ZX Spectrum games were known 
for suffering from some pretty big color clashing issues. And so, a lot of developers would usually try to make their games as dark as possible so as to not have your character walk over anything that could cause this issue. But here, the devs chose to embrace the spectrum's limitation and turned it into a strength. And I just love seeing the almost psychedelic color shifting that you see on Simon. So even though this isn't Simon's quest, it's laid out very similarly. Though it's far more linear and a lot less cryptic. With the game outright telling you where you should go and warning you if you're going in the wrong direction. In many ways, this game ends up being the best of both worlds between Simon's Quest and the MSX Castlevania, giving you the scope of Simon's Quest but with better direction and while well fixing many of the issues I had with the MSX release. Like for example, if you dispatch the enemies on a screen, they will not respawn, so you won't be suffering any cheap hits like you did on the MSX. With that said though, there is a lot of dialogue. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot of dialogue. And there are a lot of attempts at being funny, which mostly just fall flat. But that's a pretty minor issue, and quite honestly, that's the only real issue I have with it. Well, that and the extreme difficulty, but this is Castlevania, so it's kind of expected. Oh, and the soundtrack is absolutely phenomenal. Please, I beg you, track down this game. It's freeware and it's so worth your time. Come Castlevania Harmony of Despair is a digital-only game released for the PS3 and Xbox 360. You pick a character from the various 2D Metroidvania games and run with 5 other friends on a pretty gigantic map. How gigantic you ask? Here you go! Can you see where I am? No? I'm right over here. You can technically play this game by yourself like I'm doing, but it's pretty clear that this game wasn't meant for that, as there's levers, buttons and elevators that you need to press that do something elsewhere. So it's clear that the idea is to get someone to go to point A and do thingamajig, while someone else goes to point B and waits for person C to finish their task and then they all meet up at the end at the stage boss. Also, the bosses were not meant to be taken by just one player, because they are incredible damage sponges. The idea is good, but no one is playing this game anymore, and the few times that I did play this game online, let's just say it was pure chaos and no one was doing anything right. A good idea, but poor execution. Castlevania Order of Shadows is a game released by Konami for Java phones. The first thing that immediately sticks out to me is just how awful the sprite work is. I mean, look at this! Are these really the best walking animations you could come up with? Anyway, this game is a little weird. It plays like a traditional Castlevania where you complete stages and fight bosses. But you also gain experience, level up and equip items. And even though it's split into stages, you can return to previous areas in the current stage. Although doing this kind of breaks the level design, as it's pretty clear you were never supposed to backtrack. I'm also pretty sure that a lot of these backgrounds were ripped straight from the 16-bit Castlevania games. The controls are also super weird and janky, with some very questionable hit detection. And the music is… it's fine, I guess. Overall, I really cannot recommend this one. This was followed up by Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, also for Java phones. This is basically a scaled down port of the Game Boy Advance game. And you know, considering how limited phone games were at the time, this is actually kind of impressive. You've got the same leveling up system, weapons, armor, items and even the soul gathering is here. 
The frame rate is awful, though I have no idea if the game actually ran like this or if it's an emulation issue. The truth is, Java emulation leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, yeah, there's no real reason to play this when the GBA original is so readily available. But it is an interesting port, which has been largely forgotten by Time and Konami. But Konami wasn't quite done with Castlevania on phones, with the release of Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Just like before, this is a simplified port of the Nintendo DS game. But look at it! It runs way smoother, the controls are spot on and the hit detection is perfect. This is honestly the pinnacle of Castlevania on mobile gaming. And once again, everything is here. The items, the leveling up system, the map, the gear and the soul collecting. Heck, you even have to use your keypad to draw symbols like you did in the DS game. This is honestly really incredible. If anything, the only flaw I can find with this game is that it's a port instead of being an original title. It's interesting to see how Konami's efforts kept improving with each subsequent release. And if they had made Order of Shadows with this quality, I guarantee you that it would now be considered a long-lost hidden gem in the Castlevania library. As it is though, the fact that this is just a downgraded port of a much better Nintendo DS version is its biggest issue and that is a shame, because there is so much potential here. But this is not where our Castlevania journey on mobile gaming ends. It turns out that China apparently loved Castlevania, because they made a ton of clones. Ordinarily, I wouldn't talk about these games, except that they would just straight up lift assets from other Castlevania games and that they were often sold in digital storefronts posing as official Castlevania games. Yes! People bought these games thinking they were legit Castlevania titles. I should also point out that I don't know their real titles and that I'm just using their storefront names. So I'll just run through them very quickly. Castlevania Resurrection is very clearly an homage to Castlevania Area of Sorrow. Your character is obviously inspired by Soma Cruz and he even moves and attacks like him. A lot of the opening areas are also reminiscent of Area of Sorrow's initial area. You'll also run into other NPCs and characters to talk to on occasion, though I have no idea what the story is. This game also has a ton of menus and sub-menus, and boy, these go deep! You've got tech trees, runes, pentagrams, and that's just the ones I could make out. And this game is even kind enough to automatically equip you with the best weapon and armor you have as soon as you pick it up, so that saves some menu fumbling. I did find this area where the game is clearly telling me that I need a wolf transformation. So it would seem that our unnamed hero is also partly inspired by Alucard. But I either did not acquire this ability yet or I simply don't know how to activate it. The areas are also split into an overworld map, which you can travel back and forth once unlocked. Sadly, the emulator seems to be lagging a bit with this game, a problem that is a recurring issue across the board. But regardless, this game is way better than I originally gave it credit for. Castlevania The Undead Contract I have no idea what's going on here. At first I thought I was this just Belmont looking dude, but it turns out that I'm actually this demon. The problem is I cannot get past the tutorial area because I can't read the text prompts. Next game, Castlevania Vampire Castle. This is another Metroidvania, but the controls are actually closer to that of the 16-bit Castlevania games. Unfortunately, the emulator does not get along with the menu system, meaning I cannot access items, potions or even save. I did find an ability that slows down time and the game seems to be using these for some minor puzzle platforming. And I also ran into a boss, but because I could not use any of my healing items, I was pretty unprepared for him. This one might be ok, but in its current emulation state, it borders on unplayable. Castlevania RPG Man, you can't even chalk up this one to a mistranslation. They literally hard-coded the Castlevania name on the game's title screen. 
It's basically a 2D turn-based RPG in the style of the 16-bit Final Fantasy games. I have no idea if it was created with RPG Maker or if it's using some in-house engine. But it is funny how it's just using official Castlevania music for no reason. All I know is that you start out with this overpowered party, then you fight who I assume to be Dracula, they lose, and now suddenly you're playing as this much weaker dude and you have to rescue them. Castlevania Frost Legend For some reason I could not find the jump button on this one, despite me trying every key multiple times. Hard pass. Castlevania Opera Legend This one literally opens up stating that you're in the Castlevania Order of Ecclesia somewhere in China and that is just so funny to me. This one is a vast improvement over the previous game, even if many of the assets were clearly taken from Symphony of the Night and the GBA games. The controls are a bit stiff, but yeah, this one is pretty fun. I like the weapon variety and I even picked up a gun which made dispatching bosses way easier. The level design is weird though, I literally ran into 3 bosses on my first 12 screens, so the first area almost feels more like a boss rush mode than it does in Metroidvania. You can also absorb the souls of enemies and bosses like in Area of Sorrow. Like for example, I absorbed the soul of this wolf boss and was now able to transform into a wolf myself. But you can absorb the souls of lesser enemies as well. This one is actually pretty good, though the pixel art leaves a lot to be desired, especially when compared to other of these bootleg Castlevania games that we'll be taking a look in a bit. Castlevania Symphony of the Night Yes, they straight up just called this one Symphony of the Night on the storefronts. This one could have been good if not for the horribly stiff controls. Even by phone gaming and classic Castlevania standards combined, these controls were just awful. Hard pass. It seems that when China is not obsessing over Castlevania, they obsess over Devil May Cry because we now have a game with a dude that is clearly inspired by Dante. I gotta say, I really enjoyed this game quite a bit, despite the horrible frame rate and laggy controls. Though I don't know if these issues are from the game or the emulator itself. This one features a pretty big map and enemies will often drop loot and items which you need to forge using formulas and raw materials. I did manage to find and defeat a boss and was rewarded with this neat slide mechanic which allowed me to explore more of the castle. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed the pixel art. I like how the shading on these statues will change when you destroy a candle holder. The mad lass who made this game did not need to go that far, but I'm glad they did it anyway. Castlevania 2 or Castlevania Demon 2 This one has pretty good pixel art and the controls are pretty great. It honestly had a lot of potential but suffers from one major issue. You start out way overpowered. The game reminds me of those Korean and Chinese MMOs, where you begin already more powerful than anything the game throws at you. I mean, I'm only level 4 and I'm already doing over a thousand in damage. A shame too because this one had potential. Castlevania Demon Tree So now we're just straight up mixing Castlevania's exploratory gameplay with Devil May Cry's combat and you know what? I am all here for it. Just like its predecessor, you start out outputting some pretty high damage values, but in this case, I think it actually works towards the game's benefit. Because you're constantly getting attacked by dozens of enemies and you need to chain different combos to defeat them. You've also got a map, leveling up system, incredible sprite work and shops, like your typical 2D Castlevania game from this time. This game is actually really good and fully deserves to be translated and ported to a better system. And finally, we have its sequel, Castlevania Demon 4. This is pretty much the same as the previous game, and as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. We still have the same addicting combat, the same combo systems and the same gorgeous art style. Now, this game actually did get an English release and was brought over to Android phones under the name Castle of Shadows, which looks far better, but now has the issue of requiring you to use touchscreen inputs. When I said this game should be brought over to a better system, this isn't what I meant. And finally, we have Konami's current bread and butter. 
look, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these because why would I? But we have a Castlevania Pachinko, which, uh, it's Pachinko. At least it's bright and flashy, I guess. The funny thing is that these machines have a lot of, uh, footage that I can't show here on YouTube because, <sighs> of course it does. We also have not one, not two, but three different Castlevania patchy slot machines. Patchy slot Akumaju Dracula 1 and 3 are based off of Castlevania 1 and 3 respectively, while patchy slot Akumaju Dracula 2 is based off of Curse of Darkness and Lament of Innocence. And then we have four different Castlevania slot machines. We have Castlevania Ring of the Heavens and Valiant Garden, which not gonna lie, these games, and I use that word loosely, look cool as heck! I mean, look at this! It's like if someone crossed Castlevania with Mario Party, except they're also slot machines! And we also have Castlevania, Labyrinth of Fire and Labyrinth of Love, which honestly seems to be just your boring, run-of-the-mill slot machine, but with some Castlevania artwork thrown in. And there we have it, a look at a lot of Castlevania games. Are there any titles I missed? If so, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters, who helped me create the best channel I can. Thank you for helping make the channel better. Anyway, I hope you have a great day, bye!